Okay. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Fortnite Mythbusters. In today's episode, we have a whole ton of insane season five Fortnite myths. So, just like always, if you do have a myth you would like me to test in the next or future episodes of the Fortnite Mythbusters, make sure to go down in the comments and drop a comment of that myth for a pretty good chance to be featured. As well, if you are new to the channel and you want to help us on the road to 1.1 million subscribers, make sure to subscribe and also turn on those post notifications to never miss another Fortnite Mythbusters episode. And lastly, let's see if we could smash 7,511 likes on today's episode. That would be insane. But without further ado, let's get right on in to today's video. Kicking things off, jumping straight into the first myth. The first myth is, can you heal from a campfire while you're still hiding in the sand? Now, this myth might actually come in handy for you in-game because I can think of three locations right now that there's campfires that are literally in the sand, which, uh, you know, whenever you use a campfire, a lot of people see you because of the smoke but if you're hiding in the sand no one will really expect you to be there something to know is that you actually will heal while you are in the sand next to the campfire it still has the same exact radius but you cannot stoke the campfire nor can you light it or even relight the campfire once it's fully put out this is good to know if you don't really care about stoking the campfire then you know you could hide if not though you, you might have to just stay above ground and uh you know just box up or something going straight into the next myth and another highly requested myth this myth is what happens when you use a rift fish next to an NPC or even a boss? Now the outcome is going to be the exact same whether it's an NPC or even a boss. So uh, you know, I just tried this out with Mandalorian himself. To do this myth, I basically had to find a rift fish. If you don't know what a rift fish is, it's basically a fish that you could get, uh, and uh, you know, it's pretty common. A lot of people do get them in real games, and it's basically a porter rift. You, you eat the fish, and uh, you know, you teleport up into the sky, and a little rift is also left behind on the ground. Once I made my way all the way over to Mandalorian I then you know ran directly straight up to him I basically gave him a big hug I ate the ripped fish where both of us actually surprisingly teleported up into the sky but a Mandalorian himself he just dove straight down into the ground he uh, he pulled out his glider which was the default glider and uh, you know he went back to his little area going into the next myth and another highly highly requested myth this myth is do you tunnel through the sand faster if you have the hot chili pepper speed effect so I'm sure all of you know about this but for those of you who do not know whenever you eat a hot chili pepper in game it'll actually give you a speed boost effect it's like 1.5 maybe even two times the speed as a regular player with the sand tunneling being a brand new feature into Fortnite a lot of people are wondering if you do consume you know a, a hot chili pepper will you tunnel through the sand way faster or even just slightly faster than uh, you know if you were to not eat the pepper when I tried this out I basically set up two walls a starting line as well as a finish line I put both of the footage side by side one of them where I actually ate the hot chili pepper the other one I didn't I tried to aim my crosshair in the exact same area and you know I, I just held down W which uh, you know is it's basically my run key and uh, you know it, it didn't seem to have any speed boost difference whatsoever this is definitely something good to know because the hot chili pepper is in game they're pretty useful you know not a lot of people fight with them but when you do fight someone who has the effect they're a lot harder to hit because uh you know they're moving so much faster so uh, you definitely don't want to waste the pepper just to go through the sand went into the next myth and actually a similar myth to uh the last episode of the fortnite Mythbusters. this myth is if you consume a rift rock and jump off where you'll take fall damage if you teleport last second will you still take the damage so in the last episode we actually tried something similar but instead of you know teleporting last second while we are in the air to uh, you know get to the ground faster or whatever we actually teleported off the edge of you know a cliff or you know a, a building a structure or whatever and uh, we, we did take fall damage and we would eventually die which is something good to know but in game if you do have the rift effect and you do fall from a super high height uh, even all the way up to max build height I don't know how you would have you know the rift effect all the way up there but if you do teleport last second you won't take any fall damage and you'll be perfectly good to go this could be very useful in a, like a squads game or something if you and your team Team are build fighting and uh, you do have the rift effect and your teammates chop down the build you will take any fall damage because you now know to teleport last second before you hit the ground to uh to, to counter that going into the next myth the next myth is if you're carrying a knocked player will you still sink underneath the sand this is a very very good myth because usually uh when, whenever you're carrying your knocked teammate you're running away from a fight or you know you, you throw them into a box or whatever and uh, with the with the map half of it literally being taken up by the sand you never know if you might sink and 
and uh, it might be a new way to, you know, escape some fights or whatever. When I tried this myth out, I basically got a knocked player. I then went over the sand where you're supposed to sink, and usually you would sink in the ground, but uh, whenever you're carrying a, a player over your shoulder, you will not sink, and it's like Fortnite knows this, but uh, it, it totally doesn't make any sense either because you, you're literally carrying someone over your shoulder. You would think you would sink maybe a little bit faster or something. But also, if you are holding like an AR, a shotgun or whatever, and you are aiming down the sights, you won't sink either. So I guess it's, this is kind of Fortnite's way to uh, hopefully make players not totally rage because it would suck in the middle of a fight if you, you know, you're sinking into the sand and then you can't shoot or anything. Going into another very, very highly requested myth. This myth is what happens when you are the final player in a game and you try to set a bounty. Will it set the bounty on yourself or not allow you what exactly happened? This is actually a very, very good myth because usually in a real game, when you are the final player, you, you end up, you know, just celebrating your victory royale and you don't actually get a chance to set a bounty, let alone the final zone actually ending near an NPC without, you know, them still being alive or whatever. I tried this myth out in a custom matchmaking game. You can see that I am in the game all by myself. This acts the exact same as a real game. And even if I were to win a match, I would be by myself. There would be literally nobody else. So uh, no nothing really changes here besides the fact that it's basically a private lobby. I attempted to set a bounty in game, but it actually wouldn't let me. It would allow me to do other quests in the game and, uh, you know, allow me to set them. I would basically click on it. It would show the yes or no, you know, the thumbs up or whatever. But uh, when I would go and try and click on the bounty, I, I would be able to click it, but nothing would happen. And if you do look closely, it looks like it's like grayed out, which means, you know, you're not allowed to. This is definitely something I did not know and i'm surprised fortnite even took this into consideration because who thought that you would be in a game by yourself trying to set a bounty either way went into the next myth the next myth is if you pick up mandalorian's mythical sniper while you're midas will the sniper be affected by midas's golden touch now whenever there's a brand new mythical weapon added into the game we always test this out because you know it's kind of like a 50 50 there's been some mythical weapons where the midas's golden touch will actually affect it and then for instance like last season with iron man's you know all of his mythical weapons those were not affected by Midas. So uh, Mandalorian Sniper, unfortunately, it would not turn gold. I, I tried to drop it, pick it up, shoot a couple bullets. Nothing happened as well as the jetpack. I put the jetpack on. I took it off. I tried everything I could to get it to turn solid gold, but unfortunately, that was not the case. I mean, honestly, I have no clue why Midas's golden touch doesn't affect a lot of the mythical weapons. It really doesn't make sense because the whole point of Midas is to make the weapons golden. I went into the next myth and a myth I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. This myth is what happens when you eat a thermal fish and then use a thermal scoped AR or in this case Mandalorian sniper since it also has a thermal scope. Ever since the thermal fish was added into the game I've been flooded with people asking me to actually try this myth out and unfortunately I, I never have been able to until this season. Now when you eat a thermal fish it basically gives you you know the thermal vision you know how whenever you scope in with a thermal scoped AR it'll show players up in a bright white and everything else is kind of grayed out or whatever to make the players really stand out it basically tracks them off of heat mandalorian sniper this season as well has this type of thermal scope but instead of the players actually showing up as a solid white they are like this reddish color, which uh, makes this myth even a little bit more interesting. Scoping in with Mandalorian Sniper, looking at the IO guards, they still had the red effect that, uh, you know, the Mandalorian Sniper always would do for players. So that's no surprise. But as soon as I ate the thermal fish and I looked at the IO guards, as well as even scoped in with Mandalorian Sniper Rifle, uh, basically it, it totally got rid of Mandalorian's color effect, you know, with the thermal and uh, the, the solid white, you know, the, the thermal that we are used to, uh, kind of took over. When the thermal fish effect was basically over and I would try and scope in with the Mandalorian sniper rifle, uh, it would just zoom into the screen. The, the scope was no longer there, nor the crosshair or everything, but you still could shoot. And uh, I dropped the weapon, pick it back up, and uh, it still had the same effect. So it's definitely very interesting and a pretty, pretty good myth.